I was burned over 75% of my body. When I did look at myself in the mirror, what I looked at was not my burns, but I looked if that was still me. There is still a part of me that was there. You're gonna know something really cool. These right here are my toes. I'm the only person in the world that has six toes in their hands. I love my scars because it really shows a part of me, what I've been through. When the accident happened, I was eight and a half years old in Romania. It was around December 10th, and my parents just came down for Christmas to celebrate with the family. My dad, he, he was drinking a lot that day, and I don't remember him being, you know, usually that angry, but he was really angry that day, and he started arguing with my mom. After that, I just remember him going outside, and I thought that he was gonna calm down. But then later on, he came back inside of the house with a gas can, and I became very scared. And so I tried jumping over to my mom's side of bed, and uh, he was standing right in front of the door, and decided to throw the gas right in between, and it just instantly caught on fire, and I fell down and uh, fell unconscious. I was in a coma for two weeks. I didn't know where I was at. I had wires hanging all over me, had tubes in my nose, you know? And so I wasn't really sure what was happening, and I was scared. And I wasn't sure of how much I was burned, but I could feel it through all through my legs, my arms, my face was burnt, like, hurting. I was burned over 75% of my body. The surgery that they first did is they amputated my fingers because they were so so badly burned that they had a chance of getting affected. And after that, they just focused on skin grafts and saving my legs because my legs are burned basically from the about the hip all the way down to the ankle. So they took a whole bunch of skin grafts from my back, put it on my legs. It's really important to lotion because like your skin, if you're burned, it doesn't stretch as easily. So the lotion really helps kind of put that moisture on there and let the skin stretch a little bit easier. My legs do get tight, and so I need to put a lot of lotion on to keep, keep them stretching. Um, and if I don't, then what's gonna happen is the doctors are gonna have to go in and do like cuts on my leg to stretch the skin out. I've already had that done once, but I don't want to do that again. <laughs> this, this skin graft right here is the skin that it took to put around my lips and it went all around. Um, I've had a lot of others. I mean, these are just burns. Um, this piece right here is where they took my rib and put it in my nose. And then the whole back right here on my back is all skin graft. While I was healing, that's all I wanted to do is go and see my parents. I would try to get the nurses to tell me where my parents are, how are they, and they would just tell me that they were burned, they were being treated in another room. It was like Mother's Day and I was uh, he healed up a little bit more. I was able to move around. I asked them if they could bring me a flower so I could go and they could push me down the wheelchair so I could give it to my mom. My, my aunt, she told me that that day that both of my parents passed away. And it was really, it was probably the hardest emotional like I, I, pain I felt because I went into like depression for over two weeks. I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink anything. That's when I met Jessica and Ashley, and uh, they, they would come to the hospital and visit me and just kind of bring me a little balloons and candies. Our daughter, when we first talked to her, told us about, you know, this young boy that she met in the hospital who was burned, and, you know, it was just real brief. But then, over the next few days, we learned that he'd lost his nose. We learned that he lost his fingers. Then we learned that he lost his parents. We knew he lost his parents long before he did. I started losing sleep, thinking about him. I heard his story and I knew that there was a boy that needed a mom. 
I had lost a son just two years earlier. I was a mom that needed a boy. I felt like we were kind of meant to, to have him in our family. I was there for nine months in the hospital until I f finally left to America. When I first came to America, it was, it was a little bit different because I didn't have a nose, I was still really freshly burned, and I didn't have fingers. And I did get bullied quite a bit, and it was hard to kind of handle it. But what I, what I learned was that if you turn that bad into making it funny, so that way he can't laugh before I do. So I would walk up to them and just kind of introduce myself, and I'm like, hey, I'm Marius, you wanna know something really cool? They're like, yeah, what? I'm like, these right here are my toes. And they're like, wait, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm the only person in the world that has six toes in their hands. And, and then they're like, no way, so, um, but I just you know, really learned to ignore it or laugh at it. Um, those are the two best ways. Being burned, getting stared at, and talking to people, I feel like it has really helped me develop a sense of like understanding what some people might be going through. I love my scars because it really shows a part of me what I've been through um, and I just see it as an artwork that every day it's, we build onto it and make it stronger, more beautiful. See you at the beach. I met Marius in the airport uh, when he first came to the United States from Romania and then we spent the next few months to about a year hanging out, showing him everything, anything we possibly could. So I, I, we grew up together. We're right around the same age. He's, he's one of my best friends. He's got a smile on his face every single day and he, he pushes hard, harder than most everybody that I know. So the team Marius, it really started way back then when Ashley and Jessica first came and visited me in Romania. They created a um, little group uh, where people could donate money and help me, and they called it teammarius.org. I decided to start a Team Marius as a merchandise and selling clothing on there. I want to donate a portion of my profits to a nonprofit organization. I want to start helping out children the same way I was helped of helping them come to the United States and get treatments. He's just a very considerate, kind, and thoughtful person. I've learned and I remember always that, that my problems aren't so bad, that there are people out there that have it harder than I do. We just have to make the best out of it every second that we're given because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. We don't know what's gonna happen next second. And I really hope that we can just keep on like trying to be positive, happy, and helping others all along the way. 